Well, <laughs> the Chaco on the Mount Everest of violin playing. <laughs> um, yeah, the opening is really that monumental thing. And um, yeah, we want to do several things. First of all, we of course want to play in tune and tackle all that chords. Um, it's a chacon, it's a dance, and uh, we want to have that dance thing going on. So there still must be some, yeah, maybe at the same time some lightness to it. We want to hold the melodic line. We want a lot of things. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to talk about the bowings. Um, I think it's good to play it with the retakes and um, not slurring too much because I think it becomes very heavy uh, because of that. Um, so instead of... Yeah, it, it, it loses the Chacon uh, character maybe because of it. Um, and this is something, if you would do this in an orchestra part, members of your orchestra would instantly like turn around and <laughs> look like that uh, to you. But here it works very well. And I've seen a lot of good performances of this where people use this bowing. <laughs> gesture of um, uh, yeah the down down and uh, yeah almost playing everything in that way uh, then in terms of the double stops there are actually three schools in this there is an old-fashioned way of really taking everything to the letter so that that um, GF needs to be there throughout the whole first bar for example <laughs> So, but that yeah gives a very heavy thing to it, and um, perhaps that's not what Bach meant with the chacon. And the most common way to perform it now is to uh, let the upper notes ring, but to uh, play that A just as a single A and um, see the accompaniment line more as a double bass in the corner than as something that really should be sustained by you all the time. So they should sound, um, but it doesn't mean that you should bow them because the chord will keep sounding uh, because of the resonance. So the notes are still there, but you're not actively um, you know, sustaining them anymore with your bow. Um, how I've learned it, a third possibility, and I like it, but I don't play it like that anymore. <laughs> um, but, but I like this suggestion of my teacher because it it does give the light dance feeling. And it's that you play the chord real fast, so you break the chord very quickly and you just leave the top note. So. It, it has its advantages, uh, you certainly get some lightness, you certainly get some dance feel, um, but you have this single open string. And the open E string. I don't know, um, it's an option. What I do like to take from it is the quick breaking of the bow. I like that very much, um, because actually if you break the bow, maybe yeah, like in a rhythm like this, Um, get a new rhythm and uh, you get a new rhythm when you break the bow so we want to get as close to playing the notes at the same time perhaps that we aim for that A to be there right at the start of course it's 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 physically not possible <laughs> but we have to think like uh, we are violins playing a simple melody uh, just as a dance There is a double bass somewhere in the corner. Something like that. Um, you can imagine that. <laughs> so what I like to do is to make a combination of the last two interpretations. And here's some 
something interesting. Um, we have the 16th notes and uh, the bass line under it is first a quarter note and then an eighth note. So we shouldn't play, at least I think, uh, I think Bach put it there for a reason. <laughs> it was a typo or something. <laughs> And I've always been told to just play that C sharp also as an eighth note. But now I discovered this, I like to point out the difference actually. And then uh, continue in that way. Whatever bowing you uh, choose there, uh, I like to do everything non-slurred actually. Uh, but here something different starts, because here we have this beautiful line on the D string. And um, I like to move a little bit more to the interpretation where you let the chords sound um, really shortly. Um, just to, just to, to keep that line on the D string there. In, in this part I tend to uh, go more in the direction of yeah, the interpretation that, that I learned for the beginning. So yeah, it's, it's fun to play around with that. And then in some places uh, do play the double stops. And here again. Also, I'm not sure to decide. Yeah, I think it's personal to do them um, or every time. Maybe a trill there. <laughs> um, and then we get to a piece, and there are many, you know, stories about. Uh, what Bach meant and what happened with him. <laughs> and um, well, in Italian, the six solos are si solo, which also means I'm alone. And there is this myth that um, Bach wrote the Chacon when he came home and his beloved wife had just died. That myth has been busted, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> whether it's true or not, uh, I think that it's beautiful after this monumental beginning to uh, play this very alone. And there, uh, play them together again. Something like that. Well, I hope these ideas are interesting. Maybe you are thinking something completely different and I love to hear that in the comments below. Let's just exchange some uh, ideas about this monumental piece, uh, which we will all maybe never fully master. And uh, well, this video was a bit different from the violin lessons that I usually publish on my channel weekly. Um, but I hope you like it and uh, maybe there are other things you want me to cover in this similar way. Other pieces, other problems. Just let me know in the comments and uh, I hope to see you in the next lesson. Subscribe to my channel of course to see the next lesson. And uh, well, thanks for watching. Bye!